Sorry, okay? The Mac Studio reviews have started pouring in with lots of people singing it praises already. Apparently it can even handle some games. But what about us, software developers that have to use this for work? Is it even a machine worth considering for somebody that essentially just writes text files and moves text files around? So today I want to look at the Mac Studio from a developer's point of view using three words, can, need, and should. So I've got my Mac Studio right here with the M1 Ultra chip and I'll get into why I got this specific machine momentarily. But today I wanna to look at the Mac Studio from a developer perspective, because there's probably a lot of developers out there thinking, is this the machine for them or not? And of course, be aware that there's lots of different kinds of developers out there and I'll touch upon some of the different ones later in this video. Now, when the MacBook Pros came out in October of 2021, software developers everywhere rejoiced because this represented a professional level machine and it used the new Apple Silicon technology, which brought all the benefits of Apple Silicon to software development world, the professional world of software development. But even with the power available in those machines with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chip, I think even that was too much for most software developers. And you might have even caught my video breaking down which new MacBooks or which new chips are good for which developer roles. And even I compared it with some of the older chips. You can watch my video, I'll link to it down below, and you can even read the comments in that video which will give you some insights into what folks are thinking about that. Now, the M1 Ultra, who is it really for? Should software developers even care? Recently, I ran a poll on this channel and it suggested that most of you either don't care or won't be upgrading to the Mac Studio. I somewhat agree with that sentiment since there's only a few software developer roles that really could take advantage of that new power, like with the M1 Ultra chip. And I'll get into that momentarily. And of course, I'll be doing specific tests, languages, uh, frameworks, and so on. Later on, I'll be doing comparisons with the Mac Studio and, uh, you know, machines like this one. This is the Intel Core i9 12th generation Alienware. It's got the RTX 3080 Ti chip uh, card in there. So we'll get those comparisons. We'll do machine learning tests and so on, of course. Consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see that. That subscribe button is right below that like button. However, it's not only about power. It's also desktop versus laptop in this case, right? Because these new Mac Studios are desktops. And yes, they still come with the M1 Max, which is a really powerful chip and the M1 Ultra, which is an even more powerful chip. Aside from those factors, it's a desktop. So if you need a desktop, you know you need one. Actually, I should rephrase that. Uh, I should say, if you don't need a laptop, then why pay for the extras you get with a laptop, screen, keyboard, and so on? And you're paying along with the potential downsides of the laptop, which is shoving a powerful chip in a small space where you can get potential throttling levels much easier, when you can spend less and get a much better cooled system with fans, ventilation, like the Mac Studio. So based on all that, can a front end web developer get a Mac Studio? And the answer is yes, of course. Do they need one to make them more productive at doing front-end web development. And I'm just talking about web development as an example here. Of course, there's a lot of other developers out there. And if you want me to do a breakdown specific roles for the different machines that are available right now in the Apple ecosystem, let me know in the comments down below. Well, I'll say this, for 99% of what is involved in web development, my answer to that is no, they don't need it. And finally, the third word, should. Should they get the new Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra? And I've worked on some front end projects where the build time was just past my threshold for annoyance. And if you're working on one of those projects and you're gonna stay there for a while, then you might want to throw as much hardware as you can at this thing. And the other should is related to portability. If you're still in that camp who's waiting to upgrade an older machine and you know you're not gonna be traveling, so you don't need a MacBook Pro, now you have that option to get the Mac Studio and actually save some money if you already have the peripherals like the monitor and the keyboard and the mouse and so on. And by the way, you'll only be saving money if you get the M1 Max chip, which is still a big deal. That's a really nice chip. But at the same time, you can also just get a MacBook Air. Use it in a clamshell mode on your desk with an attached monitor. And if your workload is a pretty light web development, then it'll work just fine for you. Plus, you'll have the option of taking it with you if you need to travel. I still believe that the late 2020 MacBook Air with the M1 chip is one of the better bang for the buck computers you can still get for software development in general. And we're coming up on a year and a half since those things have been out. So as you can see, even with something like front end web development, it's hard to throw out a blanket statement 
like you should or you must or you need to because there are going to be extreme versions of front end that could really use the benefit of the extra hardware. And this means that the can word applies to pretty much everybody that has the funds to buy this machine, right? Now let's talk about need. There are software development practices that need as much horsepower as possible, especially in the GPU area. These will be your game developers, your data scientists, your machine learning professionals. For those people, yes, there's a need for more RAM, more CPU, more GPU, but here we go again, should they get the Mac Studio? They can, they have the need, should they? Well, at this point, we have to examine what else is available. And we've got Intel coming out with the 12th gen processors, Nvidia's line of video cards like the RTX 3080 and the 3090 and some of the higher end cards that they have available. A game developer or a machine learning professional might be able to get as much performance from a lower cost machine that's a desktop than the Mac Studio that's even maxed out and those are $8,000 machines. For example, this machine that I have here, which I'll be doing some tests on machine learning in a bit, and I'd like to see if it'll be able to give me as much performance as uh, this 3080 Ti card that's in here to do some AI work. So do consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss those videos. My initial impression is that it's gonna be limited to certain developer roles and it's not for everyone. For my own use cases, they called for this machine because of my developer disciplines that I practice, discipline. I'm actually not that disciplined, but I wish I was more disciplined. I meant, you know, the practices that I do, the type of development that I do. I do web development, I do mobile development, I do machine learning stuff. I don't do game development, but I hope to cover some of that software here as well in my tests coming up. But I do do a lot of video work, clearly. I'm on YouTube, right? So based on my own needs, I thought this would be a much better option for me than the MacBook Pro that I've purchased in October. And if you wanna see my breakdown on my thoughts about that, you can check out this video right here. I know that uh, most of you are not gonna be getting this, but some of you have a decision to make right now. Hopefully this helps out a little bit. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.